Welcome back. Sometimes we are going to have some projects and they're going to define us like, hey, can you show us the grid? How are you thinking about the layout? And we have an idea of how we want every page of the document to be designed. And here are some examples. For example, we have where you're going to place the title, where you're going to place the images. How about if we're going to use one column, two columns, five columns, and then you make it like the draft is more professional. And they, then you say, hey, okay, I'm going to place it using the tools like this, but I'm going to use InDesign. So it's going to look more like this. And today we're going to learn how to make this look real in a near future. Maybe you're going to define for one page, three columns, like I have it right here. Or how about if you want to make a combination of each column? For example, right here you have three, but the size is different. How about here in this specific spread? Or how about a complete document? Okay, so if we're using InDesign, we're going to be able to define this um, specific layout or grid of a magazine. What are we going to do? I'm not going to save this one because this was an example for you, but we're going to file new document. I'm going to do it different today because I want you to find out that there are different ways of working in InDesign. So we're going to have this one. We're going to work on web preset. Click where it says view all pres uh, presets. We're going to select this one. The options that we have right here are the most common use on web design. We're going to create just one page and the orientation is going to be landscape. One important thing is that the unit that we're going to use is pixels because we are working on websites, okay? The rest of the information, keep it the same way because I'm going to show you how to transform it and edit each of them. So we're going to click create. Once we have it here, we have the master page and one page and that's it. The pink and lavender colors that you see right here, they're showing you the guides and the, the margins of the document. I'm going to make this one smaller so you can see the entire um, page or the entire worksheet. Now, let's go where it says layout and we're going to select margins and columns. Margins are going to be defined top bottom, left, and right. When you see this icon like this, you know, with this line, it means that each of them are separate. So I can select here 50, for example. Be sure to have the checks box in preview so you can see what's going on and how it's changing. I don't know if you're aware that it changed. Let me change the number so you can see it better. I'm going to 80. Aha, uh -huh. and I'm going to change the one at the left. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to write down 10 pixels. And maybe, as you can see, it's 10 pixels, 80 pixels. Now, how about if I want to have and keep the same number to all of them? Instead of writing down 80, 80, 80, I just have to click right here and voila, you're going to have 80 in all the areas or 36 or 30, depending on the number that you want, okay? Columns is the division that you're going to have in this specific page. You can have the columns that you need. For example, you can have four, five, six, seven, depending how much information you want to place, but consider how you're going to use it. If you're going to do for a website, maybe just two columns is going to be needed and perfectly, okay? Maybe you just need two columns. Gutter is going to be called in Spanish medianil. It is the separation that you have between two columns. You can make it wider, like I'm doing right now, or you can make it smaller. But always consider that people that is going to read the document, it has to be easy. So don't make it too smaller. For example, I'm going to put down 10. 
this is too small. Try to keep a distance that is going to, I don't know, it's going to be easier for you to read. Think as a user. It's going to be helpful for you if you think as a user, okay? Now, we have all of this information, and as you can see, you can have three. I'm going to write down three because I want to do this practice with you using three columns, okay? Then I'm going to click OK. This black ruler that I have at the top and at the left is going to help me to define a layout. So if I click it and drag it to the artboard, I'm going to be able to define a different layout. For example, I'm going to do this area is going to be for the title, this is going to be for a picture, and this is going to be for text. You are the one who is going to define where do you want to place the guides and where do you want to place the information on the document, okay? This is how you define a grid. Now, let's go again to the top menu. Margins and columns. When we created the document, we didn't have this option, right? Now, if I click Adjust Layout, this is going to be used when you want to change and transform the document. You are going to put the check box right here just in case you want to adjust the layout because maybe they request you and say, hey, I want a smaller size of the site or maybe I want a bigger one because I have the last iPad and you know, they're going to request maybe a change. And if you have this option, it's going to be easier for you because you are not the one who's going to do the changes. The software is going to do it for you. That's why I needed to come back here so you can be aware and take it easy. It's like, okay, the software is going to do the, the things for me so I can rest a little bit. Vale? Now, I'm going to press cancel right here. If you go again to the ruler and you hold it with your mouse, you're going to find out that you can define the unit that you need to for the project. If you are using points, picas, inches, millimeters, centimeters, you can change and transform it just by clicking and selecting the unit that you prefer. Okay? You can have the ruler per page, per spread, or on spine. Okay? Now, you can delete all guides. For example, it's like, I don't like anything. Just come here and delete it. I'm going to undo. Remember to undo Command Z or Control Z. If you come to the top menu, you have the option View. You can see or make it not available the guides and the grid. How, how or why? Well, it depends on you. If you think that you have a lot of lines and it's harder for you, well, you maybe are going to select Hide Guides. It doesn't mean that they are deleted. It's just that you can't see them, okay? You can lock them if you're going to continue use them. For example, as a suggestion, if you're going to make a grid, do it on the master page because you want it to be repeated on all the pages, right? And we are going to do an exercise on it, but this is just an introduction. Or maybe you want smart guides is when it's going to help you to place the things closer to the guides. And let me go again with the view. We have um, baseline document grid, snap to document grid. These are tools that are going to help you to manipulate and use all the um, elements that you're going to place in the artboard, okay? So this is how you add, delete, and manipulate the guides. Why? Because you're going to define a grid. We're going to do in the following exercise and video, we're going to do a practice on how you can define a grid depending on a specific number and information that a client gives to you. See you in the next video.